Family Theater presents Esther Williams and Richard Denning. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Double Crossing, starring Richard Denning. And now, here is your hostess, Esther Williams. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now, to our transcribed drama, Double Crossing, starring Richard Denning as Stephen and featuring Alan Reed as Luke. Come in. Good morning, sir. Coffee? Oh, well, yes, thank you, steward. Cream and sugar? A black one lump. First mate Thompson. Oh, yes, doctor. I was about to stop in your cabin. How's the skipper this morning? Is he having any pain? Well, even so, you give him my compliments and say that if he puts one foot out of bed for the rest of the crossing, he'll have a mutiny on his hands. <laughs> yes, yes, tell him I'll look in later. Bye, doctor. Excuse me, sir. Yes? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation just now about the captain. Oh, he seems to be much better this morning. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, sir. It's not appendicitis, after all. Come in. Are you the captain of this floating squirrel cage? Mm, Why, no, ma'am. I want to see the captain now. Excuse me, sir. I'll clear the coffee things off your desk. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm afraid that'll be impossible, ma'am. You see, the captain's quite ill. Then who's next in charge around here? Why, customarily, the first mate. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, not at all. Mr. Stephen Thompson. And where is he? At your service, miss. Sinclair. Uh, How do you do? Very poorly. Oh, you're Thompson. Yes, ma'am. Well, now perhaps I'll get some action. How can I help you? It's Deborah. She's vanished. Deborah's vanished. I've looked everywhere. The promenade deck, the A deck, the B deck. I see. I know she must be starving. All she's had to eat in the last 12 hours is a bowl of milk and a dog biscuit. Oh, I understand. Well, perhaps she just wandered down to the galley. Never you fear. They'll give her some meat scraps and water. Meat scraps and water? Well, they're quite good about that. My Airedale loves to make this crossing. Deborah is not an Airedale. Oh, I didn't expect so. <laughs> that would be a coincidence, wouldn't it? Mr. Thompson, you don't seem to understand. Now, don't worry, Miss Sinclair. We'll find your Deborah for you. Uh, approximately what size is she? She stands just a shade over four feet. You mean on all fours? She doesn't travel on all fours. Deborah is my 11-year-old sister. Your sister? As I've been trying to tell you. Well, but... You, you said she eats dog biscuits. She likes dog biscuits. They're good for the teeth. <sighs> Miss Sinclair, I'm a busy man. I, I thought you were tracking some poor dumb animal. I'm looking for my sister. Well, an 11-year-old child doesn't get lost on an ocean liner. She'll turn up She some... will not turn up until we find her. <sighs> what do you mean? She's hiding. She's having one of her moods again. Oh, it's a game. It's not a game. Deborah is a very imaginative child. She has a potential IQ of 135. What do you mean, potential? She still can't read well enough to take the test. Oh, she sounds brilliant. Well, she's got to be found. All right. <laughs> I'll make an announcement over the loudspeaker for the ship's personnel to be on the lookout for I her. don't think that'll do it. Miss Sinclair, I'm up to my ears in problems. The captain is sick in bed with acute indigestion. I have a customs report here on my desk to be on the lookout for a suspected smuggler who... Oh, uh, what's wrong? I swear I brought it down from the captain's quarters last night. Oh, you've lost something? Yes, that customs report. Well, that makes two of us. Because I've lost something. My kid sister. All right. And you've got to find her. We'll make every effort, Miss Sinclair. Believe me. I'll believe you, Mr. Thompson, when you produce her. Hello? It's me. Yeah? Let me in, let me in. I've got it. No kidding. What do you got? Where's Mrs. Harrison? There, she's shaving. I just got back from breakfast. In there? Yeah. Pancakes. Oh, hello, Bobby. 
You look cute without your white wig. I'll cut the comedy. Yeah, yeah, cut the comedy. I'll bash you. I got the report. Now, let's see it. Yeah, you want I should bash him one, Mitch? Yeah, simmer down. It looks pretty complete. I'm feeling right for it. I just had breakfast. Will you shut up? I'm trying to concentrate. Sure. Pancakes. They got much dope on you? They got it all. Arrests, convictions, aliases. How'd you get this? Sneaked it out of the first mate's office. You better get it back there before he misses it. Yeah, what's it say in the letter, Mitch? It says the customs boys in New York are going to be waiting. Ah, <laughs> them customs bums, they're so smart, they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what they don't know is how you're wearing a white wig and all dressed up like a lady. Sure, sure. You're going to use the same plan, then? Yeah, yeah. That's how smart they are. Oh, will you shut up? Sure. <laughs> them bums. Well, keep it the way it is for the time being. Good enough. I'll uh, have Luke take me for a stroll around the deck this afternoon and get the people used to seeing the wheelchair. It's a good idea, and I... Hey, what was that? What? Sounded like a cough right here in the room. It wasn't me. I don't hear anything now. I never cough. I never even get a sore throat. Okay, okay. Only once in my whole life was I even sick when I was a kid. You told me all about it. Will you clam up? Sure. Measles. I guess I must be hearing things. Maybe with something in the ventilators. They often make... No... That wasn't something in the ventilators. It was a cough. Seemed to come from over here by the bed. If it's someone coughing, they got a cold. Button up, will you? I'm button, I'm button. There's someone under the bed. Cover him, Luke. Uh, you bet with my heater. You, come out of there. Hey, it's a little girly. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. Knock it off. I was reared always to answer politely. Will you hang up? Sure, when spoken to. How long have you been in here under the bed? Oh, about an hour. I'm a stowaway. Uh-huh. I bet this is the kid they're looking for. Who's looking for? I heard an announcement over the speaker on my way down here. Didn't say who. Nobody's looking for me. I'm an orphan. I sneaked onto the boat three nights ago in Kidney Pool. What? She means Liverpool. Kidney Pool. Isn't that sick? Well, it was close. You see, the kidneys... Just the... shut up, huh? I've been sleeping in a smokestack. This kid's got a couple of boats loose. Look at those clothes. She's an orphan like I'm Gary Cooper. Hey, I think I got something. You ain't Gary Cooper. All right, all right, Luke. That's what I mean. Gary Cooper's a big, tall guy in the movies. Luke, what Eddie is saying is he ain't Gary Cooper. He sure ain't if his name's Eddie. That's <laughs> how smart he is. Would you forget it? Coming around here with a story like that. Just shut up. Well, I am an orphan. My parents died two years before I was born. Do you tell him, girly? Luke, don't be a dope. I think I'll bash you one after all. If they died two years before she was born, they weren't her parents. Simmer down, both of you. I got an idea. All right. If they weren't her parents, who were they? You're so smart. How would I know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for the last time, will you knock it off and listen to me? Sure. Gary Cooper. <laughs> And where was it you found her, Edwards? In Mrs. Harrison's stateroom, sir. The elderly, white-haired lady who came aboard in the wheelchair. She's not a lady. She's a man with a big, deep voice. Deborah. Oh, I can see what you're up against, Miss Sinclair. She is, and she's a smuggler, too. I mean, he is. I'm afraid, sir, that last can be traced to the letter Mrs. Harrison noticed was stuck to the bottom of my tray. Undoubtedly. We had to read it to determine its owner. Well, naturally, Edwards. I understand. I'm sorry it was so roughly handled. <laughs> not at all. Glad to have it back. It and our stowaway here. Uh, incidentally, Mr. Thompson, um, Mrs. Harrison promised not to breathe a word of its contents. Oh, fine. Uh, and neither, of course, will I. He's in with him. Deborah. That's quite all right, ma'am. I have a son about this age who's equally imaginative. Deborah, I won't listen to any more of these lies. They aren't lies. You be quiet. I, uh, I think that'll be all, Edwards, and thank you very much. Not at all, Mr. Thompson. I, um, uh, I can't tell you how sorry I am. Uh, don't mention it, ma'am. Only too happy. Goodbye, Miss Stowaway. You're a crook. I heard you. Deborah, that's enough. Pleasant crossing, Miss Sinclair. Thank you. Well. Now, wait, Miss Sinclair. Losing your temper won't help. Patsy, they're all smugglers. All three of them. Deborah. Uh, may I, Miss Sinclair? Would you mind? <sighs> Go ahead. Deborah. They're all crooks. Just as you are an orphan and a stowaway? No. That was make believe, wasn't it? Yes. But... Let me finish. Do you understand the difference between make-believe and fibbing? I'm not fibbing. Make-believe is when you pretend to yourself that the world is not as it is. Fibbing is when you pretend the same thing to others. Uh, do you see the difference? All three of them are crooks. Deborah, I'm going to take you back to the cabin and give you a spanking. I'm too old for a spanking. You're too old to be making up stories, too. I'm hungry. I want a dog bisque. I'll do better than that. I'll put you on a leash. The big one's name is Luke, and he had pancakes for breakfast. That's enough. You come along with me. Uh, Miss Sinclair. I'm very sorry, Mr. Thompson. Oh, no, you mustn't feel that way. It's, it's been a, well, it's been pleasant, really. Really? Really. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, speaking of breakfast, do you have any plans for dinner? 
We plan to eat it. Deborah. <laughs> well, in that case, would you consider eating it with me? Why, uh, that's very kind of you. We'd, uh, we'd love to, wouldn't we, Deborah? Oh, uh, I don't know. We'd love to, Deborah. Isn't that so? Of course. You're breaking my fingers. <laughs> well, then I'll, I'll join you in the dining room at, uh, let's say, 7 o'clock. That'll be perfect. <laughs> More coffee? No, thanks, Steve. <laughs> you know, we've gone through this ritual five nights in a row. What's that? I say, more coffee, and you say, no thanks, but I forget and pour it anyway, and you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Anything wrong, Pat? Oh, I, I just don't like to see it end. It isn't going to. Well, I mean, the crossing. We'll be in New York tomorrow morning. Yes, and by tomorrow night, we'll be in Philadelphia letting your parents... Scrutinize me closer. <laughs> you make it sound like you're going to the gallows. Are they any relation to the Sinclairs? Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not that bad. Oh, it's worse. Are you uh, suggesting that I keep my ready wit in check on this first visit? Oh, no. It's one of your most appealing characteristics. <laughs> well, I, I hope my appeal registers better with your folks than it has with Deborah. Oh, she... You mustn't mind that, Steve. Well, she's still pouting because I told her I don't like little girls who tell fibs. Oh, that's about the size of it. And, well, this may sound as though I'm defending her, but she's so stubborn about insisting it's not a fib that I... I really think she's convinced herself it's true. Well, you told me that's a favorite trick of hers. Yes, but usually she gives up when she's caught in the fib. This time, though, she's hanging on like grim death. That man who pushes Mrs. Harrison around on the wheelchair is named Luke, and he carries a great big gun. Oh, brother. And the old lady herself is Mitch. It's Mitch this and Mitch that. Uh, is uh, that the name she said, Mitch? Yes, why? Wait a minute. What? I want to take another look at that customs report. Oh, is there anything wrong? I don't know, but... Well, see this list of aliases the man is supposed to have used? Mm -hmm. Jones, Reed, Wolf, Gilbert. And his real name is Waldo M. Brown. M for Mitchell. Oh, is that written there? See, in parentheses. Well, the steward told you that Deborah heard him and Mrs. Harrison going over the letter to find out whose it was. Well, even so, Mitch, that's an odd piece of information to remember just from overhearing a list of names. Do you think there's a chance she could be telling the truth after all? I don't know. Where is she, up in your stateroom? Sulking in her tent and eating dog biscuits. And, and she still says the whole story about Mrs. Harrison being a man in a woman's wig is true? Well, to be honest, she stopped saying much of anything. All she does is sit on the couch and glare at me from behind a comic book. Come on, let's, let's go up and talk to her. Deborah? Deborah? Isn't she here? Oh, she must be. I told her... Deborah? Well, maybe she went out for a walk or something. Oh, my gosh. Look on her pillow. What is it? A note? Oh, of all the nonsense. What's the word? Oh, good grief. Here, let me see it. I should have put her on a leash. Dear Patsy, I'm not a fibber. I don't fib. I only make believe. They're all crooks and Sam Mug... Yeah, what's this word? Sam Mugglers. Mm. All crooks and some mugglers, and your stewed... And your steward. Uh, your steward, Eddie, is to a crook. Is to a crook. Is to a crook. And I'll prove it within an inch of my life. Oh, Steve. Yours very truly, Deborah Sinclair. Oh, what's she done? What does she mean? Well, it doesn't make a bit of sense to me. Well, she's gone. She's going to do some crazy thing. Well, now, take it easy, take it easy. We'll find her. Oh, what does that mean? She'll prove it. Honey, I don't know, but we'll find her. We did it once, and we'll do it again. <laughs> Yeah, who is it? It's me, Eddie. Hello, Luke. Hey, uh, you ain't Eddie. You go away. You better let me in. You go away, will you? I'm with the FBI. Oh, go on. Get out of here. You're just a little girl. Oh, no, I'm not. Huh? I'm like those people who are communists for the FBI. Do you are not? Sure I am. I'm a little girl for the FBI, but I'm really a big girl. You don't look so big to me. Hey, look, what are you letting Eddie stand out there for? It ain't Eddie. What are you talking about? She? Get her in here. She says she's a little girl for the FBI. You clown. What'd you open the door for? I thought it was Eddie. I ought to cave your skull in. Well, that's who she said it was. Oh, you really fixed us good. Now we're stuck with her until we get off the boat. I didn't want no trouble with the Federals. Shut up. I gotta think. See who it is. Yeah. 
You make a peep, girly, I'll feed you to the fishes. Yeah, who is it? It's Eddie. Let him in. I don't know. The last time I let him in, it was her. Would you let him in and quit trying to use your head? There's just no police in you today. Listen, something's up. I just saw the first mate in that Sinclair girl. Oh, but this is what they're looking for. Uh Uh-oh. You're all smugglers and crooks. What do you think we ought to do, Eddie? Let me take it back right now. I'll say I found her walking around the observation deck. It won't work. What are you talking about? I left a note for the FBI. You see, what did I tell you, Mitch? Will you shut up? And it proves you're all crooks. You're surrounded. Put up your hands. It's a chronic liar, Mitch. Let me take it back. I don't know. It might not work twice. It's the only chance you've got. You can't keep me here. Yeah, why not? There's room. She could sleep on the couch and... Button no- up! I'm trying to think. I'm button. Look, I'm Mitch, button. If, she, if she's gone much longer, they'll go over the ship with a fine-tooth comb and... Oh, no, no, no. Whoever it is, get rid of them, Luke. Let's get over here behind the door. What if it's the first meeting that Sinclair girl? Yeah, yeah, what do I say? Call out, wait a minute, and don't sound nervous. Yeah, wait a minute and don't sound nervous. Oh, you terrible jerk! I just said what you said. Shut up and listen. If it's Thompson and the girl, say you haven't seen her little sister since sometime yesterday at lunch. You're sorry, but I'm not feeling well. You have to give me a sleeping pill. You got that? The sleeping pill. Okay, open the door. Yeah? Uh, I'm first mate Thompson, and uh, this is Miss Patricia Sinclair. How do you do? I haven't seen her since lunch. You got that? Whom haven't you seen? Her little sister, the kid with the FBI. The FBI? And I'm sorry you're not feeling well, but I have to give Mitch a sleeping pill. Goodbye. Just a minute. Who's Mitch? Did I say Mitch? You did? <laughs> I, I met uh, Mitch's, uh, Mitch's Harrison, the old lady I work for. Pretty fast. With the white wig. I think you'd better let us in. I'd like to talk to her. Uh, you can't. She's asleep. Come on. Let him in, bonehead, and lock the door. I just said what you said. Deborah. Didn't I tell you they were crooks? You're Mitch's Harrison, I take it. You take it right. Sit down. Over there, the three of you. Cover him, Luke. Didn't I tell you she was a he? That you did, honey. What have you got in mind, Mitch? I got in mind to get off this boat when it docks tomorrow without any trouble. It's not going to be easy. You in this too, Edwards? Shut up, I'll do the talking. What are we going to do? We, 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 we can't keep them here. Yeah, I say push them to a porthole. It won't work, it's an inside cabin. What's wrong with that? They're inside portholes. Well, I figured to push them to the inside of the porthole. That's not what I mean. What a jerk. Where else could you push them? Look, forget it. To the outside of the porthole? Would you shut up? I'm telling you. Sure. To the wall? Shut up! Mitch, you'd better face it. You can't keep us here indefinitely. You could be wrong, Thompson. They might not miss the two girls until after we dock tomorrow, but I'm temporary master of the ship. He's got a point, Mitch. If he's missing, they won't even let the boat dock till they find him. Maybe not. No, maybe about it. They... Clam up, clam up. I'm getting an idea. Luke, frisk him. Sure. Uh, get his wallet, everything out of his pockets, put it on the table there. Mitch, I don't know what you've got in mind. I bet you don't. You know what you're going to do, mister? This is everything, Mitch. All right, what am I going to do? You're going to commit suicide. What? What? Oh, you can't. Mitch, I'm not going to have any part of this. Why would he want to commit suicide? Will you calm down? Smuggling, yes. Murder, no. Who said anything about murder? How else can you do it? Well, if he don't want to go, we'll just have to send him. Will you climb up? There isn't going to be any murder. Well, then I can assure you there isn't going to be any suicide. That's right, Mr. Thompson. But for the next 12 hours, it's going to look like there was. What? Let's see that stuff, Luke. Yeah, 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 here. Yeah, wallet. Well, customs report, a note from little Miss FBI. That's a personal letter. You shouldn't read it. Okay, honey, I won't read it. I'll just file it under unfinished business. I think I'm beginning to understand. Let's see if you do. I write a suicide note. Right. And you put it in my cabin along with my wallet and other things. And your wristwatch. You can take that off right now if you will. Oh, you're very thorough. I try, I try. And then you just, uh... Lock us in here until you're off the boat. I had in mind the class. And by the time they find us, you're free and clear. Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. But what if I won't write the suicide note? Uh, then we'd have to get rough. Oh, uh, not with you. You look like you could take all sorts of it. We'd have to get rough with the ladies. What do you want me to write? <laughs> Deborah, will you please stop moving your feet around? Did I kick you again? You kicked me again. I'm sorry. It's just so dark in this closet. It's always dark when the lights are out. Keep your feet to yourself. I'm sorry. Pat. Yes? Hold up your watch again. I want to strike a match. Oh, go ahead. Hmm, 5.45. Okay. Do you think they've delivered that phony suicide note yet? <sighs> I know for a fact they haven't. They don't want to stir anything up until the last minute. When do we dock? In less than two hours. It's funny they didn't tie us up or anything. Well, there isn't any need to until they leave for good. Say, what?
What's this hanging on the wall? Shh, what? Okay, Eddie, let's go. You, yeah, why can't I go with? Because someone has to stay here and make sure they don't bust out of the closet. Then, yeah, well, how come you gotta go? To be a lookout while Eddie's planting a note in Thompson's cabin. Look, will you quit trying to think? You ain't even wearing your wig. That's because I ain't wearing my dress, either. Oh. Oh, shut up and keep your eye on the closet. All right. Oh, we'll be back in 15 minutes. There's just gotta be a way. Hmm? To get out of here while they're gone. If I can't outthink a lame brain like Luke, I ought to turn in my skull cap. Well, I don't see what... Say, what is this? What's what? Hanging here on the wall. It, it feels like a corset or something. Yeah, let me see. Oh, oh, it's just a life preserver. Really? Yes, it's one of those things you inflate by pushing a button. It blows it up in case you have to jump overboard to save yourself. It... Jump overboard. What? I think I've got it. It's worth trying, anyhow. Oh, what's worth trying? Those inside portholes. One of them opens onto a companionway, and it's dark by now. What are you talking about? They turn off the lights at 3 a.m. Steve! Shh. Luke! Say, Luke! Yeah, what do you want? Do you have to point that gun right at my nose? Yeah, I wouldn't want it to go off and miss you. What do you want? Listen, this is going to disgrace me. What? You've made me write a note saying I'm going to commit suicide. And now it'll turn out I not only haven't committed suicide, I, I haven't even tried to. Yeah? Is that fair? You make a liar out of me and wreck my whole life? You, you want to commit suicide? Of course not. But at least I, I want to make it look as if I tried. I could wing you in the shoulder. I've written a note saying I'm going to drown myself. I can't wind up shot. Oh, yeah. yeah but what could I do? Well, you could push me out a porthole. Well, you drown. No, no, look. What's that? A life preserver. I could float for hours toward New York. Go on. I could. And then tomorrow afternoon, just before I got picked up, I'd drop the life preserver and say I swam in. That'd explain everything. Yeah, you might float in ahead of the boat. Impossible. There's a strong headwind. I'm a first mate. I know all about this stuff. Mm, I don't know. Now, look, all I'm asking for is a break. Just push me through the porthole. I'll take my chances. Mm, well, it's little enough. Okay, come on. Okay, so long, girls. Goodbye. We'll see you in New York. Say, wait a minute. Hmm? Mitch said these were inside portholes. Well, sure, he's right. He is? Of course, but on the other side, they're outside portholes. No kidding. Well, any sailor knows that. <laughs> <laughs> that Mitch sure was playing it so smart. That's all he knows. Yeah. <laughs> They're only inside portholes from the inside, eh? That's right. <laughs> Some wise guy. Wait till he hears this. <laughs> well, let me open this one up here. <laughs> How about him, Mr. Know-it-all? Uh, would you mind holding my life preserver while I climb through the porthole? Yeah, won't you need it right away? No, no, I can tread water until you throw it to me. Ah, okay. Well, thanks again. Here I go. <clears throat> okay, Luke, throw me the life preserver. Hey, I didn't hear no splash when you hit the water. Of course not. You're in a soundproof cabin. But I heard a thump. That was when I kicked the side of the ship. The ship ain't soundproof? Just the cabins. Throw me the life preserver, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, here you go. Hey, thanks. Boy, it's dark out tonight. Yeah. Can't even see no stars or nothing. Well, that's because we're not on the starboard side of the ship. Is that right? Well, didn't Mitch tell you that? No. Oh, he's got a lot to learn. Yeah, that Mitch, he's so smart. Well, I better get started or I'll miss the Gulf Stream. Thanks a lot, Luke. Yeah, don't mention it. You know, you got a lot of nerve doing a thing like this. Oh, ain't it the truth? <laughs> Down on the dock. Hi! Hi, folks. Uh, those my future in-laws, huh? If they'll have you. Oh, there shouldn't be any trouble about that. I'm brave and genius. I round up smugglers. You and five able-bodied seamen. Carrying rifles yet. Oh, I'll admit I had a little help, but who did the brain work? That's something I want to ask you about, Steve. Mm, yes? Pat said you probably saved our lives last night. Oh. I said he did save our lives. Oh, now, girl. Well, you did. Well, all I did was wait there in the companionway until Luke closed the porthole, and it was a simple case of rounding up an armed guard and placing him and the others under arrest. Well, that's what I want to ask you. What you told Luke. You mean about wanting to jump overboard and float into New York? Yes. Oh, that was marvelous. <laughs> and the part about, about his not being able to see the stars. <laughs> because he wasn't on the starboard side of the ship. <laughs> oh, I can hardly keep a straight face. Oh, excuse me, Debbie. What did you want? Well, I 
I'd like to know, is all that just make-believe? Oh, why, of course. Oh, are you fibbing? This is Esther Williams again. You know, each week we receive letters from listeners all over the country. These are a never-ending source of pleasure to all of us associated with family theater. Recently, however, we received an unusually beautiful letter. It, it so completely sums up the entire purpose of family theater that we'd like to share it with you. Here it is. The other night, my husband should have been studying his physics and I should have been mending his socks. Instead, we were listening to the radio. Secretly, I was worrying. Will he be called to the service? Will we ever be able to have a home of our own? How much will it cost for a nice chicken for Christmas this year? Then, suddenly I was aware of a friendly, calm, quiet voice saying something about prayer and God bless you. It was the family theater program. For a few still moments, I was aware of the most important kind of peace in the universe, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. You people on the family theater were very close to me. You were among my dearest friends, my most loved. And somehow, somehow we all were with God. For a moment I felt certain that the world isn't going to the dogs after all. The outworn proverb that says, it's always darkest before the dawn, suddenly seemed true. You made me feel that perhaps the dawn is just an hour away. Perhaps the world's distress is a kind of well, a kind of spiritual labor pains, and, and in a while, with faith in God's help, all the pain can be turned to joy. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the writer, and we hope that our program will mean as much to you as it did to her, and that you too will, will experience what we mean when we say, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Double Crossing, starring Richard Denning. Esther Williams was your hostess. Alan Reed was featured as Luke. Others in our cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Gayon Kelly, Lou Krugman, and Alec Finlayson. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present... No Contest, starring William Campbell. William Gargan will be your host. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.